Sog, also known as the Swamp of Sog, is a region in southern Skareth bordering the Spriton Plains. It is characterized by its tropical climate and consists primarily of dense ape knot jungles growing from freshwater lakes. It saw little seasonal variation, and maintained the same humid climate, high temperature and daily rainfall throughout the trine. Because of its invariably warm climate and plentiful rainfall, Sog was rich in flowers, which were larger and grew more abundantly than anywhere else in Skareth. Sog flowers were among the most common, and grew from the swamp beds. Much of Sog was covered by a dense canopy of ape knot trees, which grew there exclusively. Their outgrowth was so densely packed that it was hard to discern where one tree began and another ended. Drumler were creatures native to Sog. Often mistaken for plants, these unique creatures stayed hydrated by soaking their root like feet in the marshlands. No heavier than blades of grass, they would band together in a sturdy mass known as a stack and assist each other in feeding on swamp slop. They would travel to fresher bodies of water with the entire stack moving as one, making a squeaky rustling sound as they went. These journeys were very disruptive to the geography of the marshland and would cause Jelfling from the Drenchen clan to get lost in their own swamps. With its fine coat of thick green fur accentuated by long pale feathers, the Pimlin shares many aesthetic similarities with the Sidetic, although it is actually a mammal rather than a bird. A creature of Sog, the Pimlin builds its nests using swamp mosses and feeds itself on marshland tree leaves and insects. One of the most elusive of Thray's species, the last known captive Pimlin was dissected in Skeptic's lab late in the Age of Division. Skeptic's only note about the specimen was that the color of its blood matched its fur, a pleasant green hue. Flingets were amphibians native to Sog, and were among the most common animals of that region. Their backs were covered in thick, wet hair, and sported a large mouth containing a sticky tongue which they used to catch insects. They were typically seen floating along the surface of marshes looking for food. The Drenchen erroneously believed that contact with flingets would cause wart s, and thus avoided them. Their bodies were covered in a musky-smelling mucus which acted as a natural defense, and sported a mouth with upturned corners giving the illusion of a smile. Their eyes were red and glowed when in a state of happiness or excitement. They were herbivores that fed mainly on algae and decomposing plant matter. Nebris never stopped eating, and continued growing throughout their lives. Their lifespans were relatively short, though they compensated by being prodigious breeders. Young Nibri hatched from eggs and were born toothless. The podlings considered the Nibri their totem animals, and domesticated them for their dairy products, prizing their milk in particular, from which they made cheese. They would also eat their meat and use their oil in cooking, but only after the animals died of natural causes, as killing was taboo in podling culture. The actions of the Nibri were also significant, as the podlings would interpret auguries. Squidleach were hexapodal invertebrates native to Sog. They were omnivores who attached themselves to stones or fallen logs, and primarily fed on fish, though supplemented their diet with lichen and algae. They were generally harmless unless attacked, in which case they would lash out at their attacker with their tentacles with enough force to dislocate an arm. Found in both Sog and Endless Forest, the Gizizi is a brown and orange amphibian with four stubby feet and a long tail. Because they are frequent preyed upon by larger animals, females of the species have evolved to lay multiple clutches of eggs per trine, ensuring their population remains robust. As part of the birthing process, the mothers push their small transculent eggs through their skin. Once hatched, the offspring cling to the backs of both parents, sometimes dozens at a time, until they feel brave enough to drop off and venture out into the world on their own. Gridits were solitary amphibians related to Riddits, native to the endless forest and Sog. Highly adaptable, they were equally at home near streams and tall grass copses. They were characterized by their rubbery skin, cartilaginous skeletons and suction-cupped limbs, which allowed them to fasten to smooth rocks when hunting in riverbeds. Gridits needed moisture to survive, and were often found sleeping in puddles soaking up the water in their pores. During droughts, Gridits would enter a state of suspended animation after expelling all liquid from their bodies, waiting for the rains to revive them again. Fuchsia wart beetle rub their hind legs together to produce a soothing lullaby that can be heard throughout the wetlands of Sog. 
The insects are a staple of the Drenchen diet, and children of the tribe are often tasked with collecting them by the thousands. Drenchen Cheggs use the beetle's plump abdomens to create protein-rich stir-fries, along with many other dishes. Sontonic were small mammals native to Sog in the Endless Forest. Recognizable due to their compact facial features, wriggling noses and the hundreds of sharp quills lining their backs, they preferred to live near brackish water. Their mossy quills were used to trap seeds, spores and other flora until the creatures resembled traveling gardens, which unfortunately made them easy targets for predators. Sontonic were known to thrive in captivity, however, and Gelfling from the Drenchen clan and the Stonewood clan would keep them as pets, utilizing them as living scrub brushes. While it resembles an eel or bottom-feeding fish, the muskie is capable of leaving its watery homes by levitation floating or swimming through the air for sustained periods before landing in the marshy waters of Sog to rejuvenate. Although they feed on smaller fish and land animals, muskie have been known to form strong bonds with gelfling. In fact, juvenile muskie are sometimes kept as companion animals. The Spritten Plains were a collection of hills and meadows on Scarith located south of the Endless Forest. It was dotted with valleys containing brooks and streams concealed by tree copses. The plains were lacking in metals this wood fiber and clay were the region's principal raw materials. A primarily agricultural region it was the homeland of the Spritten Clanth majority of which lived in Sami Thicket and several podling communities. The hills and meadows of the plains were rich in grass and wildflowers. The sprit on through many generations of agricultural experience managed to extend the growing seasons of several crops and yielded larger harvests than in other areas as well as successfully introduce non-native cultivars. Furry horned farm animals that move in herds mounders can be shorn for their coarse wool or used to pull plows. Under their horns they have shriveled wizened faces and lidded eyes. They use their large multi-jointed hands to construct mounds of grass clods and soil that act as windbreaks against the elements. They are also able to construct rudimentary shelters. They are born with two birth seeds on their flanks. As they agatha's seeds develop into saplings that keep growing until the mounder reaches maturity. Although docile and slow-moving mounders are also intelligent and loyal. Herds of mounders have been known to fight to protect their owner's land and their presence is enough to dissuade most predators. Bublups were creatures commonly found in the Spritten Plains. They had squat spherical bodies set on thin lanky legs which resulted in awkward movements and required them to perform a series of evasive cartwheels to escape from predators a single bublup would have multiple mousum of which were so small they could barely be seen and would eat by burying itself in soil and using its mouth to filter insects and nutrients from the soil. Podling foragers would often mistake bublups for root vegetables which tended to be fatal for the bublup. Dig into soil anywhere on Thray and chances are you'll find a writhing mass of leffer worms. Even during the blighted and desolate days late in the Age of Division. Twos, greater than when the Dark Crystal was at its most volatile, leffer worms still managed to thrive. They remain one of the hardiest life forms on Thray, capable of completely regenerating from any wound, no matter how grievous. They can even recover after being split in half, one leffer worm becoming two. Fungal are commonly found on farms and would camouflage themselves as part of a farmer's crop. Their diet consists of fertilizer, manure and water, which they would consume through nearly microscopic mouths found on delicate veins sprouting from the tops of their heads and the bases of their trunks. Fungals smell awful and tasted even worse, which protect them from predators. Delilcate, air-filled creatures that float in the skies above the temperate zones of Thray. Lunarkin are often mistaken for dense cloud cover. Migratory creatures that can cover great distances at high altitudes, they have been known to drift from the Spritten Plains to the Castle of the Crystal in less than a day. <laughs>